Okay, so what I'm going to do now is present the task of saliency prediction and talk about some of the data sets that people use for this and some of the models. Um, but to motivate this a little, um, I just want to sort of say something about the importance of visual attention. So uh, I want you to take a look at this picture uh, for a few seconds and then I'm going to remove it um, and then take a look at the picture again. Something has changed. Um, so can you see what changed? Or is it obvious? Let's try another one. Okay, so take a look at this picture here. You can spend some time looking at it if you want. I'll take it away. What's changed? Anyone guess? Let me do it a little bit quicker and then see if you can see. Right, right, so look at this part here. Um, now there's a reflection of the building in there. All right, and if we go to this one here, look at the bar between the two people. Moves up, right? Now, once you've seen this, it's completely obvious, right? You can't unsee it, and every time you see these examples again in the future, you will always see the thing moving. But usually, if you haven't seen it before, you won't. Um, and why, why don't we see these changes? Um, and the answer is that we don't look at the whole image in their full resolution, generally. We kind of sort of look at a few small parts of it and fill in the blanks, right? So... When we're looking at an image like this, we perceive what we think we see is this, right? We think we see the whole image. We only focus on these parts here, right? These sort of parts that I've highlighted in red. And the rest is sort of all really seen in sort of low resolution, and it's kind of filled in by your mind to make you think that you've seen it in high, high resolution, right? But you don't actually see the things that are there until I direct your attention to them. Then you see it, of course, right? So, um, and sometimes you see it if I move it quicker, right? Because there's a motion then. If there's a change between two images and I'm, and I'm moving them quickly between them, then it becomes obvious what it is. That's why you need the, the blank slide in the middle. Okay, so, I mean, that's interesting, but uh, I guess, um, how does this relate to saliency prediction? Well, the idea of saliency prediction is that we can actually be pretty confident about where humans will look in images. If we repeat the same experiment, showing the same images to, to humans over and over again, they tend to look in the same places, right? Um, and this is called like visual at attention, right? And we want to model that computationally because uh, there's a couple of applications of this. For example, we can focus, if we know where, where people will look and we're doing image editing, well, we don't really care if there's a fault here, right? Because nobody will ever look at it. Same thing happens with video editing, right? That's another thing. Or you might want to crop out the most interesting part. So there's loads of little applications of this. So the question is, can we model where people will look in images? So what we want to do is, is to produce some function that will take an image and produce a heat map, and the heat map should show us where people will look, right? So it'll be warm where people look and sort of black otherwise. So people, this heat map suggests that people are going to look around here, right? Which is what you would expect. Um, I just want to say something about, there's another task, right, which is slightly different, and that's saliency, salient, some people call it saliency detection, some people call it salient object detection, and it's kind of annoying because there's a bit of confusion between what these two things are. Uh, so this salient object detection is a different task. Uh, basically, the idea is that you're meant to try and extract. It's more like a segmentation task, right? You want to extract, segment out the most important object in the image. Whereas the saliency prediction task, the one I'm talking about, is just to model where people will look. Okay, so that's, that's the difference. Okay, so I just mentioned a couple of data sets, right? Because we, we're doing deep learning and we need to have data to be able to train our models and to evaluate them. So there's a couple of very common data sets used in this task. Uh, the first is the MIT 300 data set. So this is a really, really high quality data set from MIT. Um, it's a test only set, right? So you don't actually get the saliency maps from it. Um, you just get the images and then you have to submit the, your predictions to uh, their server and they will evaluate them for you. And this prevents us from overfitting the data set essentially. But um, it's kind of one of the standards for how we compare different saliency models at the moment, right? Um, it's got about 40 observers per, per image. They were shown the images for three seconds, free view. And it was very carefully processed afterwards to make sure that the saliency maps were extremely high quality. So for example, they discard the first fixation because usually it's in the middle, right? And there's no, not really much information there. Um, and then they also uh, construct these, these maps. I'll say how it's done now in a second. Um, so basically what they get from, from their um, data is well, they get people to wear eye trackers, right? And then they track where they look when they show them an image for three seconds. And then you do that with multiple people. And then you get like sort of this raw data of where people are looking around. And then you've got to sort of turn that into fixations. So fixations in this case are where you fixate, where you stop for a second and just look at that right before you move somewhere else. 
There's also something called saccades, right? That's when you're just sort of jumping around. And you want to detect these saccades and the fixations. So they do some pro post processing of that um, to, to detect these. And then once you have them, you want to turn it into a saliency map. So what you usually do is you render these fixations on, on the image, and then you blur them with a, with a Gaussian blur, and you choose that blur size basically to, for basically to, to model the angle of, of what you can see sort of in high resolution at that. So there's, these are physiologically based sort of maps, right? So then that, that's, that's what they do in, the, in this case. And this is essentially what they do in most of the data sets. Um, so that was just a test data set. The corresponding training data set, which, was, which you should use, I guess, if you want to do the MIT 300 is the MIT 1003. It's a good data set for that because, well, it's not huge, but it was collected in very, very similar way as, to, as the first data set, right? So the, the way they generate this LNC maps and stuff like that is, is the same. So kind of it's, it's, there's not really much bias in it if you want to do, if you want to do well on the, the MIT uh, 300 data set. But generally, these data sets are too small for training deep models. And I'll show some of the deep models in a minute. Uh, but there's two other data sets that you could use to actually uh, do this task. One is the ISUN data set, which is a large scale data set of natural scenes. And the way they collected this was using webcams, right? So uh, they use Mechanical Turk and webcams, right? So it's not as high quality tracking as you will have in the MIT 300 or, or, or whatever data sets. But there is a lot more data there, right? So they basically uh, use eye tracker, or use the webcams, and then they do some computer vision to, to you know, track where the eye is looking. It's not perfect, but it works well enough. In this case, yeah, I've got 20,000 images, right? So that's, that's much better. Um, and then the other data set worth mentioning is the Salicon data set, which is really interesting because what they did is they, they collect eye tracker data without using any eye trackers at all, right? Um, so what, what are they doing there? Well, what they actually did was they wanted to collect it from Mechanical Turk again so they can get lots of data. So they set up this, this sort of artificial foveation system. So you, you, you put your mouse there, right? And as you move the mouse around, you can see more clearly what's directly under the mouse, you know, and, and less clearly what, what's away from it. So you might think, well, maybe that's not going to give us super useful information at all. Well, they did some experiments in this paper, and they showed that, you know, this correlates very well with where, where people look in the image, right? So um, it, it, it turns out to be a useful proxy for um, true eye tracking data um, and works quite well. Guys, let's, let's say something about the kind of models that have been trained for this. So first one I'll mention is one that we created our, ourselves, which is the SALNET model. It's, it's quite a popular model, and it was presented at CVPR 2016. Um, and it's just a feed-forward uh, neural network, right? So quite, quite simple. Uh, some, some things we did was like use transfer learning to, to take some of these layers from um, a pre-trained VGG network, right? So we didn't have to learn as much. Uh, we trained it on the Salicon data set, right? The one I just mentioned, right? So actually we didn't even use the MIT 1003 one at this stage. We just trained it on, on the Salicon data set because that was available and large at the time. Um, and it works, it works quite well. It's one of these fully convolutional networks, right? So, um, so just to see what the, what the outputs of this look like. Um, images are at the top, the ground truth is in the middle, and the predictions are on, on the bottom. Um, and as you can see, I mean, the predictions agree quite well for the ground, the ground truths. These are unseen images. Um, and even for more complicated ones, uh, you can see it works quite well. So if you look at the one here with, the, with multiple people, second from the, the left, um, it detects all of the different people in it sort of well, sort of highlights them. Um, and again, this one here where there's lots, lots going on, there's traffic lights and things like that, the, the system copes quite well with it. Uh, we, we extended this work then afterwards uh, with basically using one of these adversarial training uh, schemes. So this is the Salgan uh, paper. Um, so what we did here was we, we use a combination cost, right? Binary cross entropy, that's just going to measure the direct correspondences between you know, the predicted saliency and the, the, the ground truth, right? But the problem with just using that is, first of all, you know, uh, while saliency is somewhat predictable, I mean, there may be some ambiguity in what you're trying to predict. And this doesn't capture any high level sort of statistics of what saliency maps are supposed to look like, right? I mean, you can tend to do quite well on this and still produce an unrealistic looking saliency map. And, uh, we use the, this adversary here basically that's trained at the same time. And I'll say more about that tomorrow when I'm talking about generative models. Um, to, to try and be able to distinguish is this a real saliency map or not, given conditioned on the image, right? So it also gets the image so we can see. 
Um, and it turns out that that works quite well and, and, and improves performance a lot. Uh, so, yeah, just to, to, sh to show that, I guess this was our previous model and this is our, was our new model um, and it works better. Um, but also, one of the reasons I want to show this actually is because this is sort of a snapshot of the MIT 300 benchmark um, around last year. And I think it's, has, things haven't changed so much. Um, but there's a couple of models here I want to go through. Um, so DeepGaze, MLNet, Salicon, DeepFix, and DeepGaze 2, because they're kind of a good cross-section of what the state of the art looks like. So I'll just show some of them models now as well. Um, so deep gaze is a particularly simple idea, right? What you do is you just take a pre-trained network that you've trained on something like ImageNet or something like that. Take the outputs of each of the convolutional layers, resize them so that they're the same size as the original image, stack them up into a volume, and then you just train um, a single sort of linear model to go from these features. So you can imagine a column of features here to the predictions, right? So that, that's all it is. And then they do some, they, they regularize the linear model a bit so that you don't overfit, right? And there's a li little bit of extra stuff in here. There's a center prior as well. But that's, that, you know, works better than you would expect. I mean, I think it's in here. Um, so deep, deep gaze one, right? So that's this one here, I guess. And yeah, it does all right, right? Because you don't, you're not really doing much deep learning. You're just taking features and fitting a linear model to them. Um, MLNet's another interesting one that's very popular. Um, so if you're doing stuff in, in saliency, you'll probably see this one as well. Basically, you just take a, a network um, and you sort of resample these features here. So that they're at multiple scales from multiple levels of, of the, the network. Um, and then you can, you can add extra convolution layer on top of that um, and try to predict the saliency map by training that. So that, that's the idea there. Um, Salicon is actually one of the ones from the guys who created the Salicon data set. So they have both a model and a data set. So it's sometimes a bit confusing, but this is their, their model. And again, you can see another team here, right? This is, a, they analyze the image at multiple scales, right? So this is kind of one of the, the things that seems to help a bit. So you see the two, the two networks there, there's basically one applied to a small version of the image, one applied to a large version of the image. You upsample the one applied to the small version of the image, concatenate the features with the one Applied to the large version of the image, um, and then you just do a linear prediction, right? And you have some, they, they you tried some different objectives as well to, 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 to train this. It worked quite well. Um, Deep Fix is one of these papers where they really threw a lot of different stuff at it, right? But um, there's a couple of, there's a lot going on here. So uh, basically, you know, if you do a lot of engineering on the, the, the type of network, you, you'll come up with something like this. So. This whole part here from the top up is just VGG16, pre-trained weights. And they do a few other things. They, they replace the uh, kernels in the last layer with, with dilated versions of the same thing, right? So it just keeps a bigger um, spatial resolution, right? Uh, then they also put in a few inception layers here. Um, and then you know a couple of these location-based convolutions, which are just normal convolutions where you've just concatenated a couple of sort of um, priors or whatever. These are just images that sort of give you an idea of how far you are away from the center or whatever, um, so, that the convolu or so that the features can, can take advantage of that. Because you know, convolutions don't really know where they are in the image. It's the same thing applied everywhere, right? So you've got to give them some information about that. And then if you're trying this, you, you, you do quite well as well. So just to go back here, I guess, you can see um, that, that was deep, deep gaze. Which one was that? <laughs> deep fix, okay. So that's deep fix, that's up here, right? So that's the third from the top. So then the last one to mention is just deep gaze two, which is I think one of the best performing ones at the moment. And the only thing they do here is really is they, they integrate some um, engineered features. So this is a kind of a hybrid model, like so partially deep learned, partially engineered features. So this box here, basically says they run you know, VGG features, they run their sort of engineered features and they have some raw pixel values and then they train another network to read out the saliency from it. So there's like a whole, it's a kind of a combination of, of using deep learning and, and some prior knowledge that you're building in with these kind of contrast features here. Um, okay, so I guess one of the things that people want to do now with saliency is go from images to video. Okay. 
So how do you do that? And there's some early works from people doing that. So there's been some new data sets released recently on video saliency, um, and people are starting to, to use that. So one thing that works reasonably well, actually it's been shown, it, is if you just take a, an image saliency model and apply it, for, apply it frame for frame, it actually works pretty decently. So that's in, in this paper here, uh, they showed that this is, the, this is basically SalNet, the one that we had. And then on the left, they have it running frame per frame, right? If you want to do a bit better, um, you can also, you can, you can split the, the model, right? So this part here is basically, these are both the same architecture, right? But they train one of them on um, optical flow, right? So you, this is a two stream thing that we seen earlier on in the video analytics, right? Um, and then you can use that to predict saliency. That's not, not too surprising, right? Because, you know, things that move are generally salient, right? And your static image model is not going to be able to capture that, right? So you do need to have something like this to get that extra performance boost. Um, and there's just a more recent work from CVPR this year uh, where they kind of threw a few different things at it to get a bit of better performance. So they have, um, you know, so actually here there's no temporal um, stability or anything like being enforced, right? So they're just doing frame per frame per prediction. Here's a different way of doing it, right? So you have your, your static saliency model and you put it through a convolutional LSTM. The LSTM should hopefully be able to learn something about, you know, that keeping things temporally consistent. And then they have a few other things in here as well. I um, think one of the interesting ones is this gaze path following, right? So there's been a few different works on this now. So uh, it's been observed that if, if I say, say I'm, I'm holding my hand like this, right? You will first look at my face and then see that I'm looking at my hand. And then you will, your, your attention will be pushed to my hand, right? There's an attentional push, right? So human beings are very good at that, right? We, we, we want to see what other people are looking at because you know, it could be a tiger or something, I don't know. So basically, you follow other people's attention, right? So that's kind of an aspect of saliency. It's hard to model uh, just looking at, at, at just, just trying to learn from the images. So a lot of models at the moment are trying to do that explicitly. So you basically try to detect the head and find the orientation of where he's looking and then predict from that where the person is looking, right? And then you have this attentional push. And these guys also use some stuff specific for video as well, because when you think about it, what happens if you... If you're recording me and I walk out of the frame, your eyes kind of bounce back into the middle of the frame, right? You sort of, you track the person until they leave and then you kind of bounce back into the middle. And that's like called an attentional bounce. And there's other, you also move your attention back to the middle when the scene changes rapidly, right? So um, if you can detect these things, then you can actually improve the, the saliency prediction as well. So, so these paths here are trying to do uh, rapid scene change and attentional bounce. Um, Okay, so that's all I have on, on saliency, so any questions? Yeah.